You guys hear me? Am I loud enough? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna be talking to you guys about laminitis, uh, specifically in horses, because that's what I grew up with. So basically, laminitis is the inflammation of the uh, insensitive and sensitive lamina, and basically they overlap to hold the coffin bone in place. And so the inflammation, the issue with that is that it will cause them to separate and then that allows the coffin bone to move. Um, something that I want to address is that people use founder and laminitis inter like interchangeably. Um, I don't think they should be. So basically founder is the worst off case and laminitis just is the like least uh, problematic. So this is just like showing what founder is compared to laminitis. So founder is the rotation in the sinking. So it's once they actually separate and then that bone starts to curve and that causes a lot of more issues than just the laminitis. So how, where? <laughs> oh, the mouse. Okay. So this bone right here is the coffin bone. And so there's two different t things that can happen. So it can either rotate, which is, I'll talk a little bit more in detail in the next picture about what happens. And then there is um, sinking that it just starts to fall. Um, and then this will be a sign later on where it starts to penetrate the frog and the hoof. Okay, so right here is the white line, which is actually the lamina. So that'll be one of the signs that I talk about later on. Um, it'll widen, which is just showing the inflammation. And then on the right side is actually what will cause founder. So the deep digital flexor tendon and the main extensor tendon will be affected once the lamina separates because it allows that coffin bone to move and it will um, allow more tension on those. And as you can see, the um, deep digital flexor tendon is a lot thicker than that main extensor tendon. So it will have more pull, which is what causes that rotation. And then the causes, so causes can be high intake of sugar, stress, infection, which is usually when they're septic, overweight or obese, uh, Cushing's disease, ingestion of black walnut, and supporting limb. So what was interesting to me is that I didn't know that horses were allergic to black walnut. It's actually toxic to them. And so um, a big thing is that people will have bedding that has black walnut in it, even if it's a, a small percentage, it can absorb into them and cause toxicity in their blood which then causes issues with inflammation. So that is a big um, cause that people don't know about for laminitis. Um, and then there's Cushing's disease, which I thought was interesting because it has to do with the hypothalamus. Um, basically what it does is it um, causes degeneration of the neurons in the hypothalamus, and then it um, causes overproduction of some, um, some hormones that have to do with uh, inflammation. And then prone to laminitis, so technically all horses can get laminitis, especially exercise-induced laminitis, but there are some who are more prone. So if your horse is obese, ponies, because they are typically overweight, even though everyone thinks it's adorable, it can cause some issues. Um, diet high in grain. So the issue with this is that a lot of people overfeed grain, especially stuff like sweet feed that has way too much sugar in it and starch, and it causes metabolic issues, and basically it just has too much sugar that the horses can't break down, and it ends up causing toxicity. Um, unlimited lush pasture, so the issue with this is that it gives them too many carbohydrates, which then again causes metabolic issues. So there is a way to manage that in just certain times to get, put them out on pasture, but that's something you could talk to your vet about. And then horses that have foundered before have an increased re risk of foundering again. And then ill horses, again, this is those who are probably septic or um, already have inflammation that is systematic. And then this is just showing this image over here that when they are obese, um, not even just the fact that they probably are, um, they have too much sugar in their system, but they also have a lot more mass that is gonna be pushing down on their hoof, which causes that separation um, a lot quicker and a lot easier. All right, and then signs. So again, I think that laminitis in founder should be separated. While um, laminitis symptoms can be found in founder, um, founder is completely separate. So for laminitis, they'll be lame. Um, heat of the hoof, which you can find whenever you lift up their hoof and feel it. Um, reluctant gait, so if you're trying to walk them around and they're limping, especially, it's more likely in their front hoofs. Um, increased digital pulse, which is shown on the right here of where you would take that. And then the sawhorse stance is shown right here on the left. 
So basically, it's just them trying to shift the weight off of their hoofs because it's painful. And then founder's gonna be those more severe cases where um, that coffin bone is starting to slide down. And so dished hoofs is shown on the right-hand side, which is where um, the coffin bone has already fallen. And then bruised stole, so this was the image I was showing you earlier, where that coffin bone, the point of it, is starting to hit the frog in the sensitive tissue. And it will um, cause seroma, it can cause bruises, seromas. And then that white and white line was another thing that I was showing you. It is the actual lamina, and it's showing the inflammation. And then thick neck is shown on the left right here, which usually just has to do with them being obese. And then prevention, a big thing, a big cause is overfeeding and having too much grain. So watch your diet. Um, if you want to, talk to your vet or someone and figure out what a good diet is, especially if your horse has foundered before. Um, manage pasture turnouts, so this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, there are certain times of day that more carbohydrates are being produced, so watch uh, when you're feeding them or when you're putting them out on pasture. If you don't have a dry lot, um, there are things called uh, grazing muzzles that I'll go over later. And then ice boots, so this is just uh, to keep the inflammation down, especially when they're on their feet constantly, whether it's like when they're at the vet or something. And then therapeutic shoeing, this can either be prevention or it can be um, treatment at, after the fact. So basically what they do is they use either, right here is plastic, um, but you can also use wood. And basically it just tries to take that um, pressure off of the lamina. And then this is the grazing muzzle that I was talking about. But whenever you suspect laminitis, if you aren't able to contact your vet right away, try to take away their feed. This is because a lot of the cause is gonna be that over to, or too much grain. So you don't wanna overdo the grain even more. So you wanna take that away. Um, put in a stall with shavings. Make sure it's not black walnut because they are toxic to that. So the, what the shavings are going to do is they're going to form around the frog and it's going to basically provide support so that it's less pressure than them walking around outside on uneven ground. Um, and then keep another horse nearby because one of the signs or one of the causes is stress. So if you do um, separate them from all the other horses and they have maybe separation anxiety, um, you're just going to make the laminitis worse. So if they do have some... So just any like regular like bed shavings, so like what they use at the fair and stuff like that. Just no, not black walnut. <laughs> oh, sorry. And then, so yeah, so after talking to your vet, just make sure that you guys make out a plan. So if you do wanna keep them in the grass, use this grazing muzzle. Some horses who have already foundered, they overeat grass. Even if you take, like make them a schedule, they're still gonna eat too much grass. So just get them this grazing muzzle. Um, weight control. So for those obese horses or those ponies, make sure that you're keeping them at a good weight so that way we're not having any issues with um, putting too much pressure. Sur surgical intervention, they don't do this often. Um, the only reason they would do this is they would, or the way they would do this is they would cut the deep flexor tendon because that's what causes the rotation and what causes the founder. They don't like to do it often because it causes other problems, but it is an option. And then again, manage pasture turnout because if they're out too often, um, it's gonna cause issues. And then manage the diet, talk to the vet about what you can do, um, about what feed works better, and then how much to feed. Let's give her a round of applause. Oh. <laughs> never know how a dog is gonna respond. I mean, wow. Now remember, this is recorded, right? It's recorded for you to see anything, but any questions? There's one over there. Okay, go ahead. Can you explain how the metabolic issues correlate to So metabolic issues, um, what, which one did I talk about specifically? Is there like one thing I specifically I said? Um, just how about like the hydrate. Yeah, high carbohydrate. Okay, so basically what it does is it builds up in the hind gut. So it'll be too much sugar that's not broken down or a lot with like um, feeding too much. It goes through the system way too fast and it'll have a buildup in the hind gut. And basically it's just not broken down and it causes endotoxins to go into the bloodstream. And then that just causes a uh, narrowing of arteries and it basically just makes it to where the blood flow um, either stops or slows down going to the hoofs and to other parts of the body as well. I have a question. Um, yes. I'm still not quite sure about laminitis versus founder. Is that a continuum and then at a certain point then it becomes founder? So founder is whenever, I don't know like the exact cutoff, but to me they don't work interchangeably because laminitis is before the bone turns. So whenever that bone curves, whenever the coffin bone cur like curves, 
it, um, that's, I think, whenever it starts to become founder. Okay, so it is like maybe a continuum. It's yes. Not, if it's mild, it's laminitis, yes. but then if the coffin bone starts twisting or moving, mm -hmm. then it's founder. Yes. Okay. Which, I mean, I can read, I don't remember what it said, because there is this, it says the term founder applies when the pedal bone detaches from the lamina and rotates or sinks. Okay. So that's kind of what I. Okay, so if the coffin bone rotates or yeah. sinks, then that's founder. Yes. Before that, it's laminitis. Okay. Courses are complicated. I'll just add a few more things.